Welcome back to our session of optimizing your combine. In this session over here, basically what we're going to do is we're going to have a little better close-up of the components so that you can kind of identify exactly what can cause issue with your machine as you're operating in the field. So if we start in front with the feeder, first thing that I always comment to customers is to make sure that they inspect the front end of their combines before they get out to the field and start harvesting. So in the morning, it's good practice is to activate the feeder reverser to check your bars, these bars, onto your feeder chain to make sure that you don't end up with any bent bars. For example, I have a bent bar located right here. As you can see, it's got a, quite a bit of a bow in it. And what happens when they bow is the distance of the chain between here and here becomes narrower. So now, when the chain, this bar that's bowed, ends up at the top feeder shaft, the sprockets are actually welded onto the shaft. So they don't move. So what has to move is the chain itself and it's trying to straighten this bar. So as you can tell, this is a, this is a cast piece. It gets pretty difficult to straighten it. So what happens is the chain itself, it will pull on the links sideways, trying to break the chain. And as, as the chain keeps going around the top sprocket, you know, just imagine, you can do 44,000 turns over that sprocket pretty quick in the day, and you do that 44,000 times, and it's just going to pull that link completely off, and you now have a busted feeder chain. That's usually what happens. Okay, so the previous slat that we had, they were made out of metal. Okay, so metal bent a little bit easier. So if I look at the 230 series combines, the 20 series, the 8010, they were a metal slat which could bend quite easier than the casting that you have over here. So that's why we went to casting on the later 240 series and the 250 series combines. So again, we want to put the slat to be a lot more rigid than the previous one to eliminate chain breakage. That's the whole idea behind it. Now these cast slats, I always get the question, can they break? Well, there's your proof right here, okay? Yes, they can break, but usually what will happen is stay attached to the chain itself, and you're gonna hear a racket inside the feeder house, and hopefully you can hit the kill button before you go any further and do any other damage. So, now, on the chain itself, we went to a heavier chain on the 250. You heard Victor talking about it. The main difference between the chain is if you look at the inner link over here versus this one, you're going to see that this one is quite a bit thicker. And the pins are also a bigger pin. So this is a much stronger chain than what we had before. Okay, so this would be your 960H. This would be your CA557 chain. That's what we used in the past. This is what we use on all 250 series combines. Now, this chain can fit on a 240 series combine as long as it has the cast slats on. The cast slats cannot fit onto a previous combine because of a ring that is welded right here. And the ring is interfering with the cast piece that you have on the back. So in order to put that slat on an older combine, it becomes a little bit more difficult. And some people, they say you can turn around and you can cut that ring off. We do not recommend to do that, okay? Because if you cut the ring off to accommodate the slat, probably the drum is gonna break in that position. So if you decide that you wanna put this whole complete feeder chain off of 250 onto a previous combine, there's a kit. There's a new front drum. There's gonna be new chain tightener on the side here. New chain tightener as well, okay? So that's to go from a, a um, newer 240 series combines to an older 240 series, 230 series, 20 series combines. Okay? All right, so that's the uh, feeder chain portion of it. Now, a couple of other things that I always point out to guys as well, to make sure you don't run into issues during the season, is if you pull out this coupler and you look at it, these should all be flush. 
If you look at them and they're recessed, that means there is debris inside these couplers. So you need to take them apart and clean them. And sometimes they're probably an O-ring maybe that's flipped over and they'll end up probably leaking. Leaking is not a, well, I shouldn't say it's not a big issue. Leakage, you'll see it. It's when the coupler is not opening properly that you don't see. And what it'll do is it'll cause some overheating in the hydraulic system. That's the part that you don't want. Okay, so have a quick inspection on these and also the plate that's actually on the header itself as well. And if you don't see them flush, just like you see here, you got a problem. So you might as well fix it before you go to the field. All right, so if we move a little further back, I talked about strippers on the top feeder shaft that is located in here. You take that shield off of here and then it gives you access to the top feeder shaft and then you're going to see these strippers on there and when I mentioned a little while ago in the power point that this adjustment we're looking for is the sprocket fits right inside here so the sprocket needs to be no more than one millimeter from this portion right here if it's more than one millimeter you're going to end up with wrapping on the top feeder shaft and sometimes what happens is you'll adjust these these bolts here it's slotted and you'll adjust them closer and these will hit the shaft itself before I can get to my one millimeter. If that happens, you can buzz some of this portion off over here and get your clearance a little tighter. So this is what will eliminate, or I should say probably reduce, the opportunity of material going around with the sprocket and causing the chain to jump out of time. Okay, further up into the cone area. I mentioned in the PowerPoint that we had veins. These are some of the veins. This is not the, the veins that's actually in the, in the uh, transition cone area. These are actually the vein that comes off, off of the uh, rotor cage, but we can use these as a sample. Okay, so what is too much wear? Okay, so what I look for is if I put these two side by side, this is the new one, this is the old one. If you've got over an eighth of an inch material gone, an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch gone off of that vein, she's ready for the garbage can. Okay, so take a new one, measure it, reach inside through the stone trap area and measure the ones you got on there, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch, you're done for the season. Okay, so get some new ones put in there. Because you remember, that's the heart of the combine, and everything needs to be smooth operating in there. No delays. It needs to get that crop accelerated to the right speed. And the more wear you have, the less speed you're going to get, and it's going to affect your thrashing inside the combine. So then you're going to end up with unthrash heads and all that kind of stuff. Okay? So that's what you got to look for. Any of the veins, eight to a quarter inch, you need to replace them with new veins. Okay, so we'll move on to the next section.